book, as I like to call it. Keep an eye on this, um, this block on peace because it, I'm going to show you where it should be later. And there again, it's that floor. And that one, I'm not sure how constant that is. I don't think it was on that sheet that I showed you. Instruction I tried. So left pain, right pain. Now, it's based on duty plate floors. So there are actually, it's a mixture of the two key plates. So strictly speaking, it isn't sheet construction, but that, sorry, that block is here represented by a photocopy. I needed it to get those three positions. That obviously is key plate one because it's K. That obvious, very obviously is. That's the book that David and I produced in 1992 and seriously needs updating. So much data has come in since then, but whether I'll get round to it or not, I don't know. And in it, these are the flaws that we listed at the time that we'd found. Floors. Key plate ones are harder. There's not as many. You'd think there would be more because those plates were used for four values, but not hard to find. This one is this break. There you see. There, there, and somewhere there. Because in that in that book, we only list these, these few key plate floors. I'm showing the last requisition for the George the sixth and the first one for Queen Elizabeth. Quite a nice multiple that. I've seen a better one where it was seven columns, probably used at the same time. But that's quite remarkable that survived. That was probably on a big parcel. Somebody had to work hard canceling that, didn't they? And so you can see, look how many D I've got. Very, very few. E is common. Then you've got F, K, M, because of that very distinctive duty plate color. N and Q are hard, there is overlap. So here you see, I've only got one N, three Q, and these down here below, I'm not sure which they are. You need dates. So obviously certain dates mean it must be N. This cover I bought because it's the only cover I have ever seen with the first requisition, the D, the, the, the one that I like on. There's a, the only problem is I think it's, it's philatelic, the other side. This was sent from South Africa to somebody in Hong Kong and then redirected to England. Mail, registered, and the, the South African registration label is under the Hong Kong label. So that's only seven pence. So it's seven pence registered. It can't have weighed very much, can it? But look at the back. The 25 cents is the registration and the $10 covers up to five ounces. Only time I've ever seen requisite that that letter D on on cover. I've seen it on piece, but never on a cover. I have to find somebody who can help me with the South African rate because that'll indicate the weight. That couldn't, that doesn't look like it would hold five ounces, does it? And this is, I haven't positioned. 
So I probably find some more, more, more positions in my reconstruction at some time. I got all these blocks at one auction lot at John Bull in 1985. I couldn't believe it. I got it, I think, for 3,000, which may sound a lot, but I was prepared to cop to 20 because it was just phenomenal. Here are more of them. Again, I've got this name, John, the Unitrick guy. What, how, what, how would you pronounce his family name? John, you remember Unitrick philatelic auctions? His wife was Miranda. Yeah, he's John Zhang. So yeah. John Zhang. Again, yeah. he was in, he was, he, I was on the floor in John Bull, and at the end he said, well, I knew you wanted it, so I didn't bid on it. So I, I was so pleased I got it for the, the starting price. There was another dealer too, who John told not to bid on it so that I got it. So that was nice. Here are some of those covers with $10 on, but all to the same company in New York. Very bad, bad plate registration. This is a sheet I used to own, but you can, I know it's not $10, but look, it's interesting. Look at this corner, but this corner looks almost normal. There must have been more than one sheet because you see pieces of this coming up. And we're right near the end now. On one, one evening, I went onto eBay and I looked at all the single $5 that, they were, that were on offer and the ones that had good scans. And there are five floors. They're there, easy to find. I just pumped in Hong Kong and 162. 162 is um, the Stanley Gibbons number for the, the post-war $10. I think if you want to use the Scott number, it's 166. I don't know how Scott got four more numbers in there, but, and that's it. The only other thing is quickly is the, the four cent, I'm just showing that this is B with a a nine millimeter, an eight, no, 8.33 millimeter gutter, whereas it was normally nine meters. And then here is without a gutter at all. That, this one is very, very unusual. I've never, I've only ever seen, I've got pieces of it, but I've only ever seen one sheet. Whereas this one is quite common. And then after the end of the war, the plates were handed on to Delarue, who just didn't bother to put a gutter in. And so D and E, no gutter. That's it, folks. Well, oh, that was that was something extra. Thank you, Nick. Thank you, Nick. Yes. I'm sorry I gabbled away there. I'm getting excited when I'm talking about things I like. Stop share. Good. Yes, thank you, Nick. There was a, a magnificent talk. Uh, you know, you 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 guided us through your the ten dollar value, and um, I mean, you know, there, there's so many. You have you have studied for many years, obviously, you know, judging by your results. And um, anybody want to ask any questions? Is there any questions you want to ask, Nick? No, the main things I want to answer are the the C, the missing printings, and also I'm interested, intrigued about my South African cover. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it Look, looks can like I, it was. Yes. Can I ask the first question? Um, yes. You know, you talk about uh, uh, the substitute paper and the chalk paper. So, yeah. what's the difference? What do you mean by substitute paper? Well, that's just what it's referred to. It isn't the same chalky paper that they used 
before and after the war. They must have had trouble sourcing that, so they use a, another paper. Uh huh. So which is which is a different. It's got a different surface because the ink doesn't take to it mm. as well as it would do if it was the regular chalky paper. Yes. The, so confusing thing, the, the confusing thing is it reacts to silver, so that seems to <laughs> mm. But if you see the printing, they're very distinct <laughs> paper types. It's the surface is different. Have, have you tried UV? Have you tried UV response? Is it, is I've it never got yet? around to that. Not necessarily for that, but apparently somebody you, told me you, that you can, you can tell the printings apart. Mm. Yeah. The ten dollar I know I don't need that, but the five dollar, for example, five dollars yeah. hard. Mm. Okay. Any any questions you want to ask, Nick? Nick, we are asking questions. Nick, we are asking questions. Yeah. For the perforations, it seems to me that the uh, it can uh, the the sheet can be put into the perforator at the different uh, size. A different side. So, is there any sort of uh, uh, sequences or logic in putting which side to the perforators, or just by the random uh, sort of uh, sequence? I don't think. I, I mean, with this issue, it was either top feed or bottom feed. It was never from the side, and the majority were bottom feed. Sorry, top feed. Bottom feed, I'm getting confused here. And I, for some reason, just that last one Q, they, they went the other way. All oh. it is is a case of turning the sheets to, to 180 degrees and the, the end result is the same as long as the, the two borders are the same width. But it seems to me that for, for, for a sheet, at least it is the side that is not perforated, but both the top and the bottoms are perforated. The sides, the sides aren't perforated. They have what's called a, an extension hole. There is one hole extra into the into the margin. Oh, I see. Okay. Nick, at what stage would they put the, to use the bad word, requisition letter and number, sheet number? Wait, what did you say again? What? I didn't get to the beginning. At what stage would they have put the requisition number and sheet, the letter and sheet numbers on the individual sheets? And I know that some sheets were not printed with those things, and those went to dealers and so on. Could you just explain no. a bit about all of that? No, okay, so Delarue have a new printing, and they send some sheets of that printing to Crown Agents. So the sheets haven't been numbered yet. Then Crown Agents return some stock to Delarue, which joins the bulk of the new printing. And then I'd assume that's when they were numbered. Mm. So well, the sheets that were yeah. numbered went to the colony. Yeah, yeah. So the sheets that were unnumbered in some cases, they were the ones that were held by Crown Agents in London. Yes. So sheets are probably bought by dealers. Yes. I, th I, I, I think I've always assumed that anything that went to Hong Kong was numbered. Yeah. yeah. And anything that went to CA or was sold by CA wasn't numbered. That's my, also my understanding. Thank you. Mm. Is, is the numbering by hand or there's a, there's a machine? It does it. I, I've never been sure. You, if you look at block, it's pretty constant. Okay, you could imagine one of those hand things that changes as it goes, but they're quite constant. So I, I, I think it probably is a machine. Mm. So you put a whole Although, trial of sheets. Which, which would be the hand. Probably by machine, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, because position is so constant. So it's got to be. Yeah. Uh, some kind of machine. Do you think that it's, it's being numbered sheet by sheet? Or, or the whole yeah. pile they, For they example, have I had, um, this is Queen Elizabeth. I had a series of 200 
the, it was the five cent, 200 blocks with the requisition number on, and the measure, it was exactly the same for the whole 200. The position. You know, the there wasn't any variation in the, mm. in the position. Mm. Very interesting. I, I, yeah. I only wish that had been $10 blocks, not five <laughs> cent. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> If you yeah. want something yeah. to watch out for, if you want something to watch out for, this this practice of numbering the sheets was a service that the all the territories served by the Crown agents could request. In some territories, at least, and I don't know if it ever happened in Hong Kong, the Crown agents ran out of stamps for dealers and asked for some back from the territory. So you've got the numbered sheets being sold by Crown agents, but then when they got the new printing done, they returned some of those new, new numbered sheets, and you actually get sheets with two numbers on, oh. just to make life really fun. <laughs> but I don't know if it happens in Hong Kong. <laughs> don't think that ever happened with Hong Kong. We're lucky with Hong Kong because they use that prefix letter. Most colonies, most territories didn't. There were probably uh, there are another two or three, I think, had the, had the letter. So in a way, it's a bit cheating. <laughs> if you collect Hong Kong, you've got, a, you've got the, the letter to help you. Although, as you can see, you have to be careful where um, stock gets exchanged between Delarue and Crown agents. Thank you. I, I don't know your name, sir. Uh, Nick Guy. Nick, another Nick Guy. Oh, another Nick, okay. <laughs> yes. Good. Uh, any more questions before we uh, invite another presenter? Any more can be put on a postcard. It might take a long time <laughs> to reach me, but. <laughs> okay, yes. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Nick for giving us a wonderful presentation. Um, the next presenter is Susan. You want, to, you want to show us something? Yes, okay. Yes. Share screen. It's my to beginning. Right. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Fine. I'm showing perforation varieties too, this time on the centenary issue. And I have to thank Nick and Ron Rackerson for pointing out to me that there were quite a few perforation varieties to be found on this issue. And it inspired me to start making a collection of my own. I'm showing the lower right hand corner of each sheet, the, the plate block sheet of corner of each sheet to help you to compare the different blocks. You can get margins that are through perforated, imperforate, you can get them with one hole extension, as there, and with three hole extensions. These are the two examples for the two cents, where you've got the one hole extension here, and the through perforation here, where the right hand side is the same for both pieces. to four cents examples. And here we've got plate 1A, 1A, imperforate at the bottom, but a three hole extension on the left hand block and through perforation on the right hand block. It, note here that they are the same plate 1A, 1A, but different perforations. You don't get just one type of perforation with one set of plate numbers. Sorry, next one. 
who we have the five cents, which is through perforated at the bottom and on the right hand side. And this is on plate one, one. Now in different plate numbers here, we've got three hole extension on the right and then through perforated and imperforate in the bottom margins. I've recorded this set, this combination on these plates, mm. the 1A, 2A, 1A, the 1A, 2A, and the 2A, 2A. And I've got these through perforated and imperforate on the 1A, 2A, 1, 2, and 1A, 1A. 25 cents. Here they both have the one hole extension at the bottom, but the right hand margins are different through perforated here and imperforate on the left block. This block is through perforated at the bottom and imperforate on the right. On the one dollar, we get the variations imperforate at the bottom with the three hole extensions on the right. The 1A1A also exists through perforated on the right. And then we have this example here, through perforated on the right and on the bottom margin. I don't think all these variations occur from the way that the sheets are fed into the machine. With the definitives, it was top fed and bottom fed, but I don't think this works all the time for these. I think perhaps they are, there must have been different machines mm. or the sh machine was varied so that the length of the comb changed. If anyone can help me with this, I'd be interested to know about this. So I used to study these Susan and I went crazy and <laughs> trying to work it out. I, I never found out. You never found out. <laughs> Not really. Yeah, it's possibly partly to do with the shape of the stamps, but I do have sheets where it's obvious that the length was quite different. So there we go. That, that's the end of, of that one. Okay. So where these stamps were printed, uh, they're, they're funny people around that area, so that might explain it. <laughs> <laughs> actually, uh, actually, the Bradbury Wilkinson printing place is within walking distance of where I'm sat now, or used to be. It's now my local Tesco. <laughs> is that New Malden, Richard? <laughs> yes, yeah, New Malden, yeah. <laughs> I think if you, uh, there must have been different uh, perforating machines, but if you, you just think that um, uh, for, for uh, you know, sometimes if you look at the omnibus issues, there must be hundreds and thousands of sheets being printed from different colonies. And, uh, you know, and if, you, if you collect ever collect uh, uh, omnibus issues in, in blocks and sheets, and you can find out that all, they have all kinds of different perforations, uh, mm -hmm. you know, very similar to Susan's. So it must have been, a, you know, they might have say maybe three or four machines that they use. Mm -hmm. uh, otherwise they can't possibly cope with the work uh, yeah. of, of uh, say omnibus and, you know. Mm -hmm. Also with, um, with the 25 cent, you had one one and one A one A. I think yeah. they were printed together. Yeah, two paints. The, right there here. were the two two panes, one was yeah. one A, one, one, one together, which again could account for one side margin being perforated through, but the other not. not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that doesn't work with all the values. Just no, don't know. <laughs> just the vertical ones. <laughs> mm -hmm. It is quite fascinating. There's about six different versions, aren't there? Mm -hmm. that you can and I like this, there's eight different combinations of plates for the five cent. Mm. Oh, yes. <laughs> have, you got, have you got the eight? I, I can remember there's one I never got. Um, I don't remember what it was. I've never found it. 
Nice. I've got one 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 a one a one two one a two a. I haven't got two one, and I haven't got two two, but I've got the others. <laughs> one of those, one of those, I probably I didn't have. They must be really rare. Two yeah. two of two of those combinations. I can't remember which ones off the top of my head. Uh, missing from the royal collection. <laughs> On your so ship. You That's why we don't have them. <laughs> yes. <laughs> they exist. They exist, but Crown agents must have forgotten to send them to Buckingham Palace. Did she say off with their head, or he say off with their head? <laughs> yeah, prob probably. <laughs> okay. I have that. Hi. I have I have written a, uh, an article on the perforations of the Anigongli easels in the Hong Kong Philatelic Society journals. So maybe Susan, you would maybe you would like to take a look and see whether my guess is correct or not. Is it? Yeah. There's a lot of guess work here. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> have a look. Yeah. <laughs> No, no. I think in the case of that centenary, it was the timing. And as as Andrew said, so many colonies were needing issues. Yes. It was 1941, so things were... They used what they had. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, Britain was into, yeah. three years into war. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. I, I collect the, um, the uh, 19, 1953 coronation. You know, there, there, you know, there are so many issues that, that uh, you know, each colony has a different, some, some different plates, different perforations. You know, must be, must be a hectic, you know, trying to produce millions and millions of stamps. Uh, there must be several machines, I think, that perforated, perforators. Right. Um, Andrew, can I quick uh, can I quickly show Chris Norton's? Yes, you got five minutes. He sent to me. You yeah. got five yeah. minutes. Otherwise, right. you have to overspill to the next session. No, I don't want to do that. Yes, okay. um, London overspill. London <laughs> 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 overspill. Go ahead. Yeah. Um. Ooh. Can you see that? Right. Right, you. Yeah. Ah, yeah. Okay. Coming. Oh, sorry. Coming. Okay. Uh, Chris sent me these because his uh, his computer is still incapacitated <laughs> but, uh, the, the first, there are three items the first one uh, when george the sixth came onto the throne of course there were no george the sixth stamps so this is a uh well not and no K, ke8 either for obvious reasons and uh, therefore the kg5 adhesives were used and this is an example uh sent via sewers on the first day of his reign. Mm. The second item is the well-known five cent stamp duty, uh, which was used for a very short time, I think four days, I think. And this one was used on the day after it should have stopped being used. Mm. And this has the T and the eight, eight cents total postage due. And Chris thinks that this may be the cover that was referred to in web. Uh, he refers to a Mr. Weber who had a, a cover dated 21st of Jan with tea and postage juice. So he, he thinks this may be of interest. And going back to Nick's presentation, Chris wonders whatever mm -hmm. happened to the uh, sheet 
that was unsold by David Feldman in 2011 of ten dollars, and he wonders whereabouts this is. Not, not, not that he's not able to buy it. I'm not sure. I can. No, the number looks different. One eight six three, looks different. Yeah. Yeah. Richard, I was working for David, and I was the one who was who put the sheet on sale. Obviously, it wasn't mine. The client declined an offer. I think he still has it. So uh, it's a person in Hong Kong who kept the ten dollar. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> Eighty four thousand pounds capped. <laughs> yes. Okay, that was from uh, from Nick. So that's short okay. and sweet. Thank you. Yeah, interesting. Yes. So uh, we we shall take a short break of uh, five minutes or so, and uh, we will come back for the third session. I'm sure that uh, um, uh, there are many American and uh, North American members have joined into the meeting. I'm sure that they've got uh, something to tell us about uh, King George VI period. Okay, so uh, we'll see you in a few minutes. Okay. But I will be coming back, so I say thank you. And yes. Goodbye thank you. Now. Thank you, Susan. Bye, the next meeting. Bye. Yeah. Bye, yes. bye, Susan. Bye. Bye, bye Susan. Bye. 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 Nice to see you, Susan. Yeah. Ah, <laughs> Thank okay. you. <laughs> okay. Bye, all of you. Yeah. You too. <laughs> right. Okay. Bye. Andrew, if you, Andrew, if you run out of stuff, I have, I have some, I have stuff here, but just let yes, everyone yes. else do yes, whatever okay. they want first. Oh, of course. Yes. We're, I've also okay, got a funny, a minutes, also got a funny story, but maybe that. <laughs> yes. Okay. Philadelphia story. Uh -huh. Okay, bye.